Hey everyone, it's time to talk about the day night 30 day project challenge. Yes, as we are here live from the Twitch offices down in San Francisco. We're not up in San Francisco or over in San Francisco. We're down in San Francisco. That's always the correct way to introduce a location. Now, you might be asking, what the heck is the 30 day project? I'm gonna talk about what it is what mine was, some learnings from mine, and then we're gonna be going through all of your amazing and wonderful projects. And this is gonna take some time because there were 1,794 people who were participating by filling out the full form over at dk30.day9.tv. So there's generally more people than those who filled the form out. Oops, I drooled. There's generally more than those who filled the form out. Um, so this is astounding. This is an astounding, job that you all did. I just was picking a bunch at random, going through the ones that had been marked as completed. It's, it's just incredible. I certainly fumbled on mine a bunch. So if you're feeling a little bad, don't worry, because I'll be leading straight off with my foibles. Um, but I just want to say how proud I am of all of your work. And let me tell you what it is in case you don't know what the fuck it is. So a 30-day project is the idea of trying to set yourself a goal that you can accomplish in one month. In particular, one that you can break into weekly tasks. So for instance, if you needed to clean the garage out, you would have, I'm going to move the boxes in this corner in week one, this in week two, I'm gonna start doing some cleaning and sweeping in week three, and then I'm going to reorganize and place everything back in the garage the way I want to, right? You have these sort of milestones. And what's nice about this is it's a motivator to do something you've been kind of putting off, maybe filling out some, you know, redoing your resume and sending out job application forms, something like that. Or maybe it's a skill you've wanted to learn. I want to get back into making music. So I'm going to force myself to do two compositions. And I'm going to outline them in the first week. And then try to bang out one in week two. Bang out one in week three. And then clean them up for release in week four. Something like this. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about mine. Um, we started this on November 13th. Which was a Tuesday, I believe. Um, is that right? I think it was a Tuesday. Um, and what my project was is I was doing a little stuff with machine learning. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look. Huh? Let's go ahead and take a look. This this is an example that I'm just going to show you. This I was recording this last night for the sake of education and edutainment. So here we have a bunch of little circles that are trying to move into the green circle. But the way that they're doing this is by learning. My project was all about different machine learning techniques. And this is an example just to introduce the sort of field look. Um, so what's happening in this is if I were to write a regular AI, I would compute where the center of this green circle is. I would compute where me, the white dot is, and then I would just start moving in that direction. This is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to instead give each of these little circles information about where their position is, information about where the green circle is, and then they figure out how to motor control themselves into the correct direction. So you can see that like this is, I mean, this, this, looks, this looks terrible, right? Look, the, look at these idiots trying to figure out how to move into the green circle. There's a couple of elements to this, which is like, um, you'll see that the, the, the white dots are moving around and then right there, they kind of reset their position. This is like, you get a chance to start over. You can imagine it like, I'm trying to get better against early two racks pressure in StarCraft, so I just want to reset the game a bunch of times and try it. Every once in a while, the green circle changes its position, so that way you, you help make sure that this bot is learning properly. Um, and so if I actually just skip ahead a little bit, you can see that the dots, literally within minutes, are getting much, much better at moving into the circle. They still kind of suck. And if you were watching, they were getting a little bit better. But look at this. Oh, my God. They're nailing this shit. Kaboom! Yeah! Oh, my God. Yes. So um, this is something that I set up earlier in the year. Um, uh, a few months ago, got this, got this puppy working properly. Now, if any of you are curious, or I should say, if any of you have ever done any programming at all, you know that there is the basic way you want to do something. And then there's... I'm doing the same thing as I was before, but the underlying architecture is better. Initially, this simulation that, I guess I should point this way, sorry. This is a new setup, I'm in Twitch. So like initially when I was doing this, it was just move to this center area. But I want my brain to be able to do more sophisticated things than this. And this brings me to what my 30-day project actually was, which is in machine learning, 
I want to be able to be a dot and have different actions. Like I can move or, as we will soon learn, you could milk a cow. That's one of my choices. Or I could water a plant. That's another of my choices. Which of my choices do I do? And okay, now that I've established what that choice is, what do I want to target with this? Do I want to milk a cow or milk a tree or milk a plant? Or do I want to milk one of the other people that's wandering around like that? I'm going to go ahead and stop this. And so there were a few things that came into my machine learning project, which was I wanted to reestablish this so it wasn't just dots moving. I wanted dots to be able to choose action and I wanted to create the idea of an action and have the little brain that's motor controlling our dot to be swapping out and switching between actions. What action gets choosed? Well, we have a neural network, a machine learning thing that actually does the deciding. So we kind of have like a decision side and a motor control side. So um, if we actually take a look at what the simulation that we set up was, all right, so look at this. So first of all, you know why the green circle is there? Because I was building on the same project. I'm going to briefly pause. Anytime I'm trying to learn something new, I don't give a shit if the code is bad. I first do it so it works, and then I completely start over and rebuild it from scratch once I know how to do it properly. So you see the circle? This circle is irrelevant for the purpose of what we're trying to learn. It's just there because I was using the same project. But here we have 50 cows, and we have 10 bad cows. And so what our farmer, who's this little dot over here, what our farmer's trying to learn to do is our, our farmer's trying to learn to milk cows but not milk the red bad cows. We also gave the cows name because it's our project and we get to do as we please. Right? So we got Chris over here. We got Fran. We got Bob. We got Polly. A lot of different cows. Um, we want our farmhand to learn to milk the cows and to learn not to milk the bad cows. Okay, so I guess these are bulls. You don't want to milk the bulls. <laughs> you don't want to milk the bulls, especially if the bull's not in the mood today. So um, this is an initial random seeding. So this is an unlearned brain. And you see it's kind of moving around randomly. It's moving around randomly. And uh-oh, it's going towards Fran. Nope, going to Linda. All right, yep, there it is. Every time a cow gets milked, uh, a, it gets removed and placed somewhere else. So Larry just got milked. So what we would eventually want our little simulator to do is we'd want it to learn to perceive what cows are nearby it and then just dart over there. Um, and so if we have a whole lot of people, oop, mixed track, there should be no audio on this. So if we have a whole bunch of farmers, this is the way that training looks at 100x speed. We have all these farmers wandering around milking all sorts of cows. And in theory, you should let this run for like three or four hours and you should have what looks like a godlike farmer. Um, now, as we keep this up, I want to talk about what actually wound up happening. I sort of framed my project because I think it's cool, and this is my show, and I get to do whatever the hell I want. Um, what I was hoping to do was to, um, you know, I had some learnings in week one. I had some a simple goal I was going to set up in week two, and then I was going to add complexity to it in week three, and then I was going to do cleanup on the code in week four. But first of all, Thanksgiving was in the middle of it and I threw out my neck. These things were crazy disruptive to my schedule. And I think that if I had to go back in time and say, what should I have done differently to ensure that I was able to efficiently complete this? It would have been that at the start of each week, say, what are the hours that I am blocking out to work on this? What are the exact hours on the exact days that I'm blocking out to work on this? Because what happened was I was thinking, yeah, I'll work on it on Thursday. And then turned out there were some other people in the area who were also not doing Thanksgiving. So we decided we we're going to do a little Thanksgiving together. And all of a sudden I was doing some cooking preparations and whatnot and doing more socializing that evening than I thought. That's fine. I'll do it on Saturday. You know, I was sort of being vague with myself. So I wound up slipping a, a, a reasonable... Um, a reasonable amount. And what happened is on the final week, on the final week, I literally just went crazy and did like a couple 11 hour days of coding. And it didn't fucking work. Let me show you. Okay. Let me show you what wound up happening. So to, to briefly note what wound up occurring, 
I took our basic architecture of just move to the center of the circle and added a whole bunch more extra juice to it. So that way it could be any task you can swap between. And then I created these little intelligent definitions of what the tasks are, what milking is and this and that, um, uh, and punished the AI for milking bad cows and rewarded them for milking good cows uh, and this sort of thing. And I made it so that this cow, or excuse me, this farmer has the ability to perceive in a large area around it, but can only milk nearby cows, which makes sense. Unless you're like Mr. Fantastic who likes to milk from the other side of the barn. I want to have the ability to again, see what's nearby because in theory, the farmer should learn. I walk to the cow and then I milk the cow. This is the universal sign for milking the cow, by the way, you can do this in foreign countries and they'll understand that you're looking to milk. Um, so I said to myself, okay, we, it, it should be that it perceives nearby and then goes, that's a nearby cow and moves to a nearby cow, milks it and then goes, all right, where's the next nearest cow moves to that and milks it. Instead, our farmer has learned to illegally milk cows from an extraordinary range. So you'll see, see, look at all these cows that are disappearing. Anytime our farmer stops moving, that means that our farmer is stopping to milk. Fuck, man, I'm, still, I'm so annoyed at this. I'm so annoyed. All right, so the thing is that w learning is a numeric process. We're trying to evaluate the total amount of cows milked per session. So if we actually look at a good progression of milking cows, we can see that on the very first iteration, it's milking approximately 1.5 cows per loop and rapidly approaches four whole cows. All right, there, this is what correct learning should look like. Now, there were a couple bugs that were encountered. I see W. Corwin in chat and Jodix helped me identify one. There was a bug where, again, if you milk a cow, when you finish milking the cow, it spawns a new cow. If two farmers begin milking a cow on the exact same frame, two cows will spawn. So uh, this resulted in some shitty behavior where um, extra cows started spawning and then infinitely many cows were on the screen. So literally the AI just wound up learning <laughs> that you just wait until you have like 1,200 to 5,000 cows, starting with 50, mind you. <laughs> and then you get, look at this, 40 cows milked per iteration. That's perfect. Um, but when that bug was fixed, we started seeing results like this. This uh, cumulative reward, uh, the reward is the number of cows milked. Uh, what happens is anytime there's some crash and something busts, whoa, don't do that, come back. Anytime there is like some error with the code or something breaks, it seems to screw up the brain. So for instance, here we were starting around one cow and you can actually see that as the learning was improving, we were getting to on average 10 cows milked per session. And then this huge spike occurs. This is not learning. This is the cow breaking the rules and starting to milk things that are like 50 meters away. And I actually thought I had repaired all the bugs and I ran a nine hour simulation. I ran this overnight, same thing. This, this huge spike is where something broke in the brain. So the good news is I have two clear paths to go down in order to help address this. So in terms of my 30 day project, didn't get done, didn't get done with this, but that's okay. I was trying to learn more about the skill of how do you get an entity to learn to choose what it wants to do and have some things it's allowed to do and something it's not allowed to do and how to pick a target, right? I want my, my, little, my little cow milkers to be able to look around, perceive all these nearby cows and walk close to Larry or Polly and milk Polly you know, something like this. So um, tons of stuff was learned. And I actually think that if I have, well, I'm starting my vacation today. I think that if I have another week left on it, I'll actually get these cows milking perfectly. Uh, and the thing that's especially nice about this is that uh, with this learning, this is a real important foundational thing. I can choose actions, pick targets, and move around with motor control. With this framework up, I could create all sorts of different tasks for our farmer to do. I could have plants that need watering, cows that need milking, barns that need building, trees that need chopping, uh, nouns that need verbing. Um, I can do any arrangement of these, and I actually think um, it would work, assuming that I can actually get enough training time. Maybe I'll need to be like the open AI people and <laughs> train my farmer for like 165 million years or whatever. Um, 
So yeah, so that's a little bit about my project. So I learned a lot, flubbed my schedule so bad, but the fact that there was this deadline coming up, I knew I had to do this project presentation. It was really motivational for me to be able to buckle down and I spent a ton of time this last weekend and on Monday wrapping things up. And I gotta tell you, it was so fun to work on. Let me just, mm. I couldn't find any water bottles, but they have LaCroix in uh, Twitch offices, so I'm gonna have some. <sighs> Good. All right. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to talk a little bit about, I want to talk a little bit about what your projects were. I want to talk a little bit about what your projects were. Uh, we had a bunch of stuff. Let me see if I can actually open this Google Doc summary. So let me show you a completely irrelevant data set that uh, still interests me a lot. So we have uh, an end of year or end of project summary. Just take a look at the sort of projects that y'all did. We had a number of categories, craft and cosplay, code engineering, education and career, game dev, streaming, gaming, health, fitness, music, visual art. Um, you can see there's some distributions here. Note that only 52 people responded out of 1800-ish, 1800 plus. So this isn't actually accurate, but still kind of interesting to see that this looks about like the distribution of the projects that were submitted to the DK30 website. Um, how do I rotate this thing? Whatever, I'm just gonna put it down. <laughs> I don't care. Did you finish? Half our respondents said yes, half said I still plan to finish, and 10% said I gave up. This actually, it looks a little inaccurate from my experience. Generally, I think that I gave up is a much higher percentage, uh, or the I did not make it to the end, but everything turned out okay. Um, tends to be much higher. So I don't want you to think that this, if you're like, oh, I was in the 10%, don't worry, man. I, I, I'm I in the I gave up slash I still plan to finish on Friday. I had to rearrange things uh, a lot. Uh, and of course, here, uh, this is check all that apply. I was too ambitious at the start. This is the most common thing that happens in these projects. Happened to me too, all right? Finished the project early and expanded my project, always the minority. And I built useful habits or broke bad habits. This is, this is the bar that we care about the most. Did you actually change something about your behavior that you wanted to? And if you didn't, don't you worry about it. You can always do it next time, and it's great. How likely would you be to recommend? Oh my God, look at these tens. Some, uh, there was one person who's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> This, this is absolutely the issue uh, if you have only 50 people. So there's a bunch of suggestions to the organizers that I'm not gonna read out loud, but um, let's take a look at some projects, okay? So I'm gonna have to put on my headphones for a second here. Uh, I'm going to be going through projects in every category. We're, we're gonna take our sweet time with this to talk about people's projects. And I'm gonna take my sweet time drinking some LaCroix. Hmm. Okay, so uh, this is from Vincent Oron in music is our first category, said, I would like to learn how to record music. Uh, uh, and Vincent Oron wanted to create a digital piece, an acoustic piece, and do all sorts of, you know, violins, violas, acoustic guitars, guitar bass, uh, acoustic bass, piano, perhaps percussive elements, and didn't get to do the digital recording. But look at this, look at this awesome um, Chrono Trigger music piece that was arranged. I love Chrono Trigger so much. Listen to this, listen to this. Wait. It's really nice. Ooh, and it's so Spanish. Mm. Yes. I mean, that's that's just incredible. And you know, I I, I probably should have said this at the start. Uh, but any and all of these projects, you can actually go straight on over to dk30.day9.tv and you can see all the ones listed. So for instance, if I do this drop down category to music, type in completed, you can actually see here's Vincent Oron who did the project that we're playing right now and there's the link to the song that we were just playing. So I would encourage you to go to dk30.day9.tv and check out some projects. This is the way that I wound up selecting projects um, to show. Just went to the website and there's just so much stuff that's there. Our next one that I wanted to share is from Neverar, 
who said, I wanted to complete a original composition of my first chill step melodic dubstep track to try to finish it. And once again, oh, we're gonna play it. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, get, my, I gotta get my headphones again. And it has a buildup. And as we know in music, no one cares about the buildup. We need punchy eight second audio clips. So we're going to the drop, baby. First attempt at chill step. So good. So sick. I love that. I love this so much. So good. All right, let's move on to the visual art category. I'm going to take this puppy off. All right, visual art. This one I want to share is Virgilian. It says, I want to create a schedule to spend two or four hours daily on a figurine of a pain elemental from Doom. If you're curious what that looks like, well, be curious no more because we're going to head on over to that. Boom. Look, look at it. It's actually, it's actually the pain elemental. Look at him getting rotated around. Look at the little guy. God damn, you guys are talented, man. I can't even get cows to milk properly, and this is beautiful. Isn't that just, isn't that awesome? Yeah, let's, let's pause this. What's, what's the next one? Ah, yes, from Harris. Harris said, for my 30 project, I'm gonna focus on developing my mental library of different character design elements uh, in attempt to get out of his comfort zone. And this link, I'm gonna close all these. I have so many links to manage. If we come on over and look at this, there's this is just an, an extraordinarily interesting project, which was, uh, and this is what I mean by trying to have a concrete output without necessarily making it. Here's the one thing I want to do. Um, you know, here Harris shared all sorts of different types of illustrations that were again the goal of which was to expand Harris's comfort with things uh, outside of his comfort zone. We have all sorts of you know weekly updates. Look at this: three unique hairstyles, two outfit studies, different hand studies, like super cool, super cool. And I really love. I, I I'm trying to do a mix of some things that were like here's the output, and other things that are like here's the skill set I was trying to learn. I think that's lovely. This one I had to pick because it's about birds. This is from Graza Waza, who wanted to get better at wildlife photography. So Graza Waza borrowed a camera and made himself go every day to the park, pending weather, in order to take some photographs. And we have some serious birds of the day. Let's take a look at some of Graza Waz's wildlife photography. Look, look at this bird. Look at that bird. Now, weirdly enough, my aunt, uh, well, this isn't actually that weird, but in terms of coincidences for me, I'm easily blown away. My aunt is obsessed with bird watching, man. She can just wander around Kansas City and she just hears a noise and she's just like, I know, she's like, it's over there, it's this type of uh, bird, it's this age and and uh, species and whatever the heck. I, it's it's just amazing to me. So it was really cool to see Graza Waza taking some birds. Look at these, look at these other birds. Look at these birds. I don't even know any, I just call all birds birds. I'm unable to identify everything. Here's my favorite one. Look, look, look at this. Look at this bird of the day, would you? Oops, oops, let me close that, close that. Look at this bird of the day. Isn't that amazing? Graza Waza went every day just trying to take photos of birds. I love how suspicious. Look at this bird. This bird is not up to anything good. At the very least, this bird is skipping class, but I love this bird. This is like my favorite. This is the bird of the day, guaranteed. What a shady ass bird. Um, also, uh, last one from visual art is from uh, Prospass, who did something I think this is so interesting. And I love, uh, one of the best ways to get a good output is to be more specific in your goals. So for instance, when I was trying to do the um, AI thing, I didn't say, I wanna learn about targeting. That was what I actually wanted to do, but instead I said, let me try to figure out how to make a farmer milk cows. <laughs> it's just a little bit more concrete. And I actually sort of specced out what some of those things are. Um, uh, Prospass said, uh, I would love to create a finished historically inspired illustration. So there's a lot of reading and studying and learning about history and references uh, was a big part of it. And let me, let me show you this piece. This piece was not finished. And once again, I can't say it enough. That's totally okay. It's about just getting started on it. I'm actually going to 
up the size of this because I think this is this is really cool. Look at this. Here's the final update from Prospass or Pros Pass. I don't know exactly how to pronounce your name. Forgive me. But I mean, this is a really interestingly colored, like all the bright purples and oranges and yellows. And you can see all these different sketches that, again, trying to have things that involve, his, or trying to have the elements of historical accuracy be at the forefront instead of things that are just less, you know, iconic-ish. You see the sketch that then turned into this more complete version. So sick. Oh my God, you're all so talented. I mean, I mean, Jesus. I can't even get cows to milk right. That's incredible. All right, now, now these, these are great. This is moving to the next category. It's education and career. Uh, now, some of these don't actually have the most showable outputs, uh, but I want to include them anyways because they're great. Active Strife was trying to just set a schedule to draft research proposal for my master's program application, which involved backgrounds, methods, expected results, meaning of the results, etc. cetera. Uh, and basically just did it. <laughs> set all the arbitrary goals Active Strife did in order to just get a head start on it. And that's what I actually loved about this particular piece from Active Strife of, um, I don't really have to do this right now, but let me just get a head start in the arbitrary deadline. Boom. So now Active Strife is ahead of the game. Whew. And Lady Lecta, yes, this is a great time. Thank you. Cheer Hex picked it out. Next one from Education and Career Lorth. Uh, had a really interesting project, which was to learn to drive. Lorth said, I've waited long enough to learn to drive. I'm just going to start learning the theory. There's no way I can get done with the practice for driving in 30 days. But Lorth set out and learned a hell of a lot. We also have Aratal in education and career set out to work towards my TEFL certification, uh, which I believe is teaching English in, in as foreign language certification. Um, and I was really pleased with the uh, conclusion that Artal wrote said that the method of having the, you know, the one, two, three, four week goals said, this helped me break down my goals into bite-sized pieces. I'm used to disappointing myself by setting my sights too high. So this time I instead aimed low and passed with flying colors. I'm going to challenge myself to do uh, just slightly and do a part two, doing one and a half times as much work. And, and I think that this is perfect. One of the big goals of this is to learn to be a producer for yourself, like for me, I kind of fumbled on getting as much work done as I wanted to. There's still plenty of time for me to do it in the future. But I learned that I need to be more diligent about every week asking when are the times I'm setting aside next week. Learning how to be a producer for myself. The lighting makes nose really stand out. Yeah, no, it's it's really weird because like it kind of makes it look <laughs> like my nose like blows up out here. And, and I really don't like it because I'm trying to like look down and read, but the light's coming from directly over my head, which also gives me these huge dark circles under my eyes. I can turn this other light on, but I actually become blind. Like if I, uh. oh my God, I, <laughs> I'll tell you anything you want to know. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. So please allow my nose to overpower you. It is the second best nose after Gogol's nose. Um, so yeah, I really love that Aratal took this to say, hey, I think I could actually do more than I intended to. So let's move on to another visual category, craft and cosplay. This one from Fredu116 was, I want to use a drawing from Click Burgundy to make an 87 by 87 bead uh, arrangement of Perler of Pyra from Xenoblade 2. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. So here is the original illustration. Let's see, Pyra Perler. Uh, and so after choosing the correct image, then laying down all the beads. Here it is in progress. And look at this. Look, it's just it's just a lovely, nice textured, meticulous construction. You know, I actually really love doing anything craftsy that involves a lot of like meticulous action type stuff, you know, like frankly cross stitching I think is really fun because you just have to do the same repeated motion again and 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 again. Uh, and I just love how this turns out. So congrats. Uh, another one. Um, brilliant. This is so smart. This is from the Mike Show Live in Craft and Cosplay. He said, I have a killer pirate ship model that was a gift from my sister, but I'm too afraid to start painting it. My project will be to assemble and paint a smaller model 
which is a car, to get my skill and confidence up before tackling the ship. You may have heard me say beforehand uh, with this project, or with, with the DK-30, um, you may have heard me say, sometimes you have a larger skill set you're trying to work on, so you pick something smaller that doesn't feel as scary, that feels more easily digestible, to tackle, to help make sure you feel good about the next one. Look at this. Look, look at that car. This is from the Mike Show Live's Instagram. And look at this just lovely paint job on the car. And um, what's really cool about this is that if you're in the Mike Show Live's shoes, you get to say after this, do I feel good about what I did? No. Okay, I'll paint another car. Do I feel good? No. Okay, I'll do another model. Okay, now after three or four, I'm starting to feel really good. Now it's time to tackle that pirate ship. It allows you to take a more vague goal of I want my pirate ship model to be beautiful, and then you make concrete steps towards it in this way. Time to take a sip from some bubbly water. All right, coming back. Um, in writing, um, so I unfortunately did not have lots to share in the writing category because a lot of people were like, I wanted to do some writing. I wrote it, damn it. Or I did a rewrite of a 650 page novel and here's a link to some of the work. Um, and I, I want to actually, instead of going through a lot of individual entries, encourage you to go check out the writing stuff because there's a really interesting range of people doing short stories, poetry, rewrites of novels, getting started on novels, just doing plot outlining. And this was one that I found particularly interesting. It was a writing project from Ma Maria D Davido. Maria Davido. <laughs> I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong, but you know, whatever. Maria Davido. It's totally good. Forgive me. Uh, said. In 30 days, I want to start a blog on medium.com and publish at least four posts in it. I'll write about software development experience, some common practices rather than particular languages or frameworks. And Maria David Du did it. And I think this is a, an interesting piece because, um, at least for me, I tend to think of writing equals novels, right? And deviations from that are, of course, totally acceptable and totally reasonable. And hell, maybe if you wanted to write a novel, just writing a short story in one of these is totally reasonable. Rando Dave says, I didn't finish all of my writing. Cyril GG says, I didn't finish all of my writing, but, but had some stuff happen. There were a good amount of people who got ill or sick or interrupted by Thanksgiving. Did you get interrupted by Thanksgiving? Because I did. Thanksgiving, like that weekend, actually kind of uh, screwied me a little bit. All right, going to the other category. The author category. This is from Cursing Bulldog. Now, I I keep using the clean out the garage as an example. Cursing Bulldog actually cleaned out the garage. And in cursing, uh, in doing so, Cursing Bulldog helped build a workbench for the garage. So here we can see, look at, the, look at this workbench. I am so impressed with anyone that can actually do mechanical construction. Because my, my grandfather was a mechanical engineer. And he would just build the most insane, crazy stuff. He had this like gigantic workshop. So you know, here's some progress pics here. Again, you can see all this on dk30.day9.tv. Here's different things. Oh, there's the bulldog himself, I presume. Sanding. Look, you can, it's almost like comic frames. You can almost imagine through the miracle of closure. You can hear the scraping of the sanding along the wood. Yeah. And even if you go all the way down here, I think. Ugh. There's just like so much. Look, here's the raw lumber. It's, it's so cool. I, this was one of the most updated projects there. I actually think I only posted one update uh, in my own thing, but I made a damn video. What do you want from me? <laughs> uh, you know, I can do more. Uh, another one from Silas051 says, I love performing small magic tricks for family and friends since I was little. I want to branch out into performing for an audience and wants to work on a 20-minute routine. That's so unique. That's so that's so cool. All right, here we go. Bam. So uh, Silas051 actually has some links to some of the magic trick performances and doing them. And uh, I'll open it and mute it. Why not? Here is Silas performing some magic. Now it's muted, and I think Silas is explaining what's supposed to be going on into the trick. But I assume that all of a sudden he's going to snap his hands together, and this is going to turn into a giant tentacle monster Cthulhu. Dra uh, Dragon Jesus, will you be going through every single project? Oh, goodness, no. I, I just chose a collection of 20 to 30. Um, I assume 
I assume there's something cool happening, but I've been looking into the camera. <laughs> Look, you do the magic trick. Um, yeah, no, it did 20 or 30 out of 1,800. Out of 1,800. I think this is really cool. All right, coming back. Salas' magic trick. Now, this one I actually found so cute. I found this one so cute, okay? This was from Zombie Master, uh, who said, the time has come for me to start dating. I've been, oh, hold on, my thing is crashing. There we go. I've been putting it off for years, but maybe this 30-day project will be the motivation I need to get out there. Now, tell me this hasn't been you before, huh? This has not, it's gonna be a little scary going out there and getting rejected, you know? It's like, hey, I really like you. Oh, you don't like me back? Well, I feel okay, <laughs> you know? It's real easy to just not, because there's a lot of great media. You can just sit at home watching anime and playing video games. Seems great. Uh, but Zombie Master wanted to go do it. Now, you've heard me talk about it's important to control inputs, not outputs. You don't want to say, I want to get a girlfriend and mean that seriously. Like, God, I got to hurry up. I have two weeks left to get a girlfriend, right? That only happens in sitcoms starring Ryan Reynolds. So there's a loud boop outside. Uh, but you can control inputs, like I want to begin this many, uh, or I want to devote this amount of time to striking up conversations. And if nothing goes anywhere for a month, that's totally okay. I'm getting in the habit of at least putting myself out there, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, Zombie Master closed out with a post saying that he had a really nice date with someone and that they went on a second date where they cooked dinner together. And as someone who watches Korean dramas, I was like, oh, I was like clapping in my computer. I was like, yeah. But I really cherish the fact that uh, Zombie Master did something that I, I feel like takes a lot of courage. It's scary to say something like, you know, I don't want to do this because I just feel stressed out. I feel anxious. I don't have the confidence that I want or something along those lines. Like, good for you, man. Anything can be done in 30 days. Now, let me put a little asterisk. I'm not saying that all you single folk in chat who want to get with someone are going to make it happen in 30 days. Dating can be a very random process. I'm not even going to call it good or bad. It's random. It's like the vending machine that you push the button and sometimes it gives you a drink. Sometimes it rejects your tax returns. Like it's a weird button. Like dating is the most random process that humanity has come up with. So the important thing is that you're willing to put yourself out there and then take breaks every now and again, take care of yourself and be willing to put yourself out there again. That's grand. All right, all right. Coding and engineering. Oh my God, I, this was so amazing. Okay, Accurus wanted to make a light show for a gingerbread house, similar to the crazy, set up, crazy setups in the US with music and lights, but small. I mean, this thing, is so ridiculous and amazing. I can't even tell you. Like, there's music that's playing. I'm not playing the music because I don't want this video to get copyright claimed. But like, there's actually music that synchronizes with all these lights. Look at that, look at the light show in the gingerbread house. Who even comes up with that? Look, oh, the roof, the roof. And look at all the little gingerbread men. Oh my God, it's going along. And again, this is synchronized to music that I cannot play because I do not wish to have this DMCA'd. Oh, it's everywhere now. I mean, that's that's so sick. That's so good. Um, another one that took an unfortunate turn, Red Terran with a code and engineering project, wanted to uh, become a Linux system administrator and as a step for the path, wanted to create a project, try to create a CentOS environment consisting of a DHCP, DNS, LDAP, uh, and VPN server to administrate my home network. Wish me luck. Now, what wound up happening is that Red Terran didn't succeed at this goal of setting this up exactly the way that Red Terran wanted. But what Red Terran did do is list off, here's all the skills that I learned over the course of this, and here's some of the stuff that I actually want to do going forward. And I think that that's just a really lovely and admirable way to approach this. Let me pop on over here. Like, see, look at this. Some of the more important lessons were this, things that wasn't finished, and all this. And look, one thing this project gave me was new ideas and inspiration for future things. Mwah, c'est parfait, c'est parfait. Dr. Research had the goal of assembling a f uh, functional, oh, oh wait, what is this? 
I actually copy pasted the wrong set of information. I'm going to tell you about this once I actually open up the page. Oh, here we go. The goal. Final assembly, functional testing, and design tweaks leading to a finished user-ready puzzle box. And I mean, Dr. Research wrote this extraordinary uh, write-up, and you can actually see in some of the imager links what the puzzle box actually wound up looking like. It was this Arduino-operated electronical, electronical, uh, electronics box that has all these knobs and switches and dials and light-up pieces. Super interesting cradle. These are sort of places that my brain like does not go for creative projects. All right, health and fitness. We had some spectacular ones in health and fitness. This one from Timmins. This is this is the healthiest thing I think I've ever heard. This is this is almost disturbingly healthy. Like partly because like I Timmins are never going to be as healthy as you. Timmins said I wanted to lose some weight and improve my level of fitness, so I'm choosing to complete 30,000 calories worth of cardio as measured by my exercise bike. I burn about 10 calories per minute, so that should work out to between one and a half and two hours per day. And Timmins did it. Not necessarily by nailing it every day. Timmins also slipped on a few days, went short, and then went long on other days, but actually hit 30,000 calories in 30 days. I mean, if you just said to me, I'm going to be on a bike two hours a day, I'm going to go, wah. <laughs> I mean, that's... That might be more calories than I've burned this entire year. That's remarkable. Um, uh, this one from Sander in Health and Fitness says, I was trying to force myself into some good habits. This includes getting up early, spending 30 minutes on typing practice, 30 minutes of cardio, eating some fruit, having breakfast every morning. Um, and I, God, I relate to this, especially with my neck thing, kind of messing up my ability to be at my computer doing the coding I wanted. It says, got sick in the first week, then got sick in the third week. I didn't create all the habits I wanted to, um, but I do eat breakfast every day now, and I'm learning more how to type and getting some of those habits down. It's fantastic. It's totally okay. You don't have to nail it every single time. Uh, what is this? Oh, yeah. Misky also fell out of the habit of exercising a while ago, uh, a while ago and said, I've been somewhat depressed-ish ever since. I needed to get back on track. Want set an exercise routine, and in the end, only missed two of those days. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of you don't want to be someone that hits some crazy result at the gym. You just want to be someone who is in the habit of pretty much going to the gym several times every week. That's the real goal. So here's some two really fantastic projects from gaming and streaming. Wode-wise, in the gaming and streaming category, I want to design, brand, and set up my channel so that it is stream ready. Develop a manifesto, create graphics for social media, and otherwise set myself up for a successful stream launch. And look at Wode Wise's graphics. Look at this. This is so great. I mean, this is this is more professional than my stuff. Look at this. Wode Wise. Look at look at how W full this is. Wode Wise is offline. And look, there is a schedule right there. Uh, Wode Wise starting soon. Look at this. Look at this streaming setup. Like literally, this is so much fancier than my streaming setup. I have a, I have a really expensive camera, uh, a nice green screen, pretty functional lights, and then everything else is just absolute <laughs> cheapo depot stuff. I mean, this is so nice, man. Wow, there's so many monitors. Oh, look, we even have JP grinding Path of Exile. You know what? They say that JP McDaniel is playing Path of Exile right now because those stats are never quite good enough. Uh, but this is, this is really lovely. This is a nice achievement over the course of 30 days. Now, one that I relate to really personally is from our next poster, Neon, in gaming and streaming, said, I'm an aspiring content creator, and I'm hoping to focus on Artifact, Valve's new card game. I had already been planning to attempt daily analysis videos, but this program seems like a great motivation to follow through. Now, interestingly enough, Neon did not post that Neon had finished the project or post any updates, but I was curious. I, I make videos for YouTube. I'm like, what, what happened in this thing? So I went ahead and went to this video page, and here's what's amazing to me. So the, the YouTube is A Space Games, and if we actually look at the dates, look at this. We have a whole bunch of artifact analysis from one week ago and also from two weeks ago and also from three weeks ago and from four weeks ago you can actually see that a space games did this 
Now, I'm someone who did daily analysis videos for StarCraft for a long time. That shit's exhausting, man. <laughs> this is so impressive to me that Neon actually did this. Like, I have firsthand experience in taking time to do this, as well as doing streaming and content creation that doesn't require a lot of prep. And those types of analysis videos are very draining. So props to you, Neon. That is so sick. All right, let's see if we can do this. Ah, oh, yes. Final category. Final category. We have some game dev projects. We all love video games here. I just want to close out a little bit of that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drink a little bit of my delicious LaCroix. Mm. So, Raricos has always wanted to make a Professor Layton meets James Bond game. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and Raricos wanted to make a spy game with some really cool animations. I'm going to show the project page open. And what I like about, uh, especially with games, is that it, a game development is it's a slow process, individually or with a team. Right? It's always just like a lot of bricks that have to be laid. But, I mean, look at this absolutely beautiful color palette. I mean, th I mean, this is marvelous. Or should I say marvelous? Er, er, er. Like, holy shit, look at this. Look at the cast. Look, we have all the spies. Yes. Uh-oh. Avocado Archibald got crossed out. I mean, this, this. Oh, oh my god, that bear is so cute. Look at the eyes. Look at him jiggle. Jiggle the bear. Jiggle that bear. Jiggle that bear. Spin spy. I mean, this is this is extraordinary. Now, if this is what I love so much about this is that if this is literally it, if it is literally this, this animation, this cast, and this little roly poly thing, what progress? I mean, that's like one month. I mean, once you have an art style down, and it becomes so much easier to create content in there. It's like, yeah, it's a really consistent and beautiful art style. It's amazing. Now, Nershka, <laughs> I actually played this game before as well. Uh, ah, hold on, my 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 Google Doc is freaking out. Oh, Nershka said, "Zombies are invading, but fortunately for you, you're at the disco." where you're the king of the dance floor. My boyfriend and I want to start and finish making a game sometime. Just trying to make it really simple. Player stands in the middle and needs to defeat all the zombies coming from all sides using the arrow keys. Now, th this game is loud. So I'm gonna, hopefully I have the volume settings correct. So I'm really sorry if I don't. You'll let me know. Or you'll just enjoy it, all right? Here's this game. Here it comes. Yeah, all right. We're going we're gonna to fend off the zombies, okay? We're going to fend them off. Look at this. Oh, yeah, now... As is the case with a lot of game art, these squares are actually zombies. Yeah, look at that. Dancing. Dancing them off. Uh, yes. Same amount of chest hair that I have. Uh-oh, the blue ones reflect. Bam. Bam. Oh, whoops. Accidentally sent out a dance move to the south when I didn't need to. And these, these are larger zombies. These require multiple hits. Yes. Yes. So you can actually play a link to this game. I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna stop playing this game. I remember I was playing this at, at home last night and I, I just didn't turn down my volume because I was tired. I don't know why I didn't, but I was just like playing. It was like, grr, 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 and I was like, ah, I had to keep stopping zombies. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's Nershka's project. You can check that out over on the DK30 website. Lead Tracker uh, was trying to learn how to use Unreal Engine 4. Uh, so aim to create a real s simple skeleton of a first-person platformer, which then Lead Tracker can improve on later. Now, I have heard the following statement about Unreal that literally everything in it looks so beautiful with, like, the out-of-the-box lighting. And look look at Lead Tracker's aesthetic. Like, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty simple level, right? There's There's not this huge complex amount of art assets there. But, I mean, the ones that are there are really effective. And Lead Tracker appears to have some sort of little teleportation style um, movement. There's these little platforms that if you stay on long enough, they fall. Uh-oh, we get stars, baby. Oh, my gosh. And look, we have some other little puzzly elements in here. Joink. Very Tron-like. Look, getting the stars. And I, I think that this is a perfect game example for the DK30 as well. Because this one, it is not... 
here is level one of Mario and I'm done with Mario, right? It's just like, I'm trying to learn the engine, so I'm gonna try to fiddle a little bit, try to make something that has just some basic elements. And there it is. Spend the next month working on a different task. Excuse me. Last one that we're gonna look at today is from Commander Cookie. Commander Cookie's goal was to create a simple boxy human-like model, then learn how to rig it up, then learn how to animate it, doing some animations like walking, running, jumping, and rolling. Here we go, look at this. Are you guys ready to run? You guys ready? Boom. Look at him go. Look at how enthusiastic our hero is moving along. And I like this because a lot of times when people think game dev, they think design and programming. But this too is a super interesting field, right? Like, how do you actually do the construction of a 3D model? How actually do you animate it and to make it run and to make it work? This is me trying to get to the stream on time today. I was like, oh, where is this in the building? Ah, uh, so excellent. And with that, that's gonna wrap up our nice juicy long video talking about the DK30 challenge, the day night 30 day project challenge. I wanna close it out again by inviting you to participate in the next one. We'll be doing one uh, next year sometime, not super early, but probably March-ish, where the goal is to take something large and shrink it down into something small that you can get done with in one month. Or maybe there's just a simple one-time task you're looking to do. And you're gonna kind of be a little task manager for yourself, a producer for yourself, where you arrange weekly goals, see if you've met them, adjust your workflow, so that way you can make some steps, some progress towards a thing you've always wanted to get done. And I, I mean, I'm just super duper proud of all the work that everyone put in. I know a ton of people are talking about, oh, I didn't get to do all the things that I did. Oh, I, I fell so far behind. You did something, and that's what's amazing. I'm really proud of any of you, even if you only did one and a half or two weeks of your four week plan, that's perfect, that's great. Just set something that's much smaller next time and just continue to try to improve, and that's great. So that's gonna end this. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to a quick editing break. I'm just gonna go to here, and then I'll be right back.